pieces mm-hmm. for Ben before the bassoon concerto, and um, we talked. We'd been talking for a while about um, doing a bigger piece, and um, Peter Scholes from the Auckland Chamber Orchestra was also very keen on the idea of a bassoon concerto, and he was putting together a concert um, with the Bartok music for strings, percussion, and Celeste, and so he. Um, ben and I kind of um, plotted together to um, make a bassoon concerto happen, and um, yeah, so I wrote a, ended up writing a, a piece for bassoon, strings, uh, harp, and percussion. It's a 25-minute piece, so it's quite a substantial. It's probably the most, up to this point, the most substantial piece I've written, um, in five movements, but sort of a continuous stretch. There's three very slow long sections and two tiny little short bursts of um, energy I suppose. Slices of life. Yeah slices of life (laughs) amongst the the kind of um, Mm. the heaviness that that constitutes the rest of the piece. Um, It's it's quite dark. Mm. Most of the piece is quite dark in character Mm. and um, timbre. Um, A lot of low strings um, and low harp, low bassoon, but also out of that kind of grows the the more lyrical upper register of the Mm. bassoon, which is quite prominent. Um, Ben's got a beautiful um, upper register, so I kind of wanted to maximize that. Um, So most of the piece kind of takes the form of a a long melodic line with string accompaniment, basically. And some lovely... um into interludes for the strings, yeah, as well, yeah, yeah. But basically, it's a it's a long bassoon melody with yes. with some string padding underneath. Oh, but not not the the strings are quite independent at times. Yeah, they at times, at times, the, some beautiful parts for the viola, mm, mm. which I um, yeah. love, yeah. and everyone um, the writing is quite. Um, there's a lot of different parts, different levels. Yeah, sometimes the textures kind of splay out into mm. more intricate things. And it looks beautiful on the page. I was looking at the score right. yesterday and it just really, yeah. visually some, it's a very nice to look at. Some parts are very, very simple. Like the last movement is basically just a, an E-flat pedal with a bassoon mm. melody over the top. Uh, but then it, at times it kind of spiders out into mm. into more complex textures. Yeah. It's it's more to do with Ben's kind of character as a bassoonist um, than our friendship per se. But um, certainly the the kind of expressive qualities that he brings to his um, performance are very much um, were in my head when I was when I was writing the piece. Um, but it's probably a more of a, a kind of a personal kind of working through of um, emotions um, than anything else. It was an honour and glad that it, that Peter was so, so keen. We're yeah. very grateful to Peter for everything that he does with... Absolutely. You know, with... Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's been a really, really nice project. Yeah, I mean, it's quite unusual for an orchestra to take mm. on such a big... Because you piece. hadn't written it, you and um, he programmed it without having seen it. Absolutely, yeah. And I think it's quite different from your your previous pieces for bassoon. Yeah, which is is good. They're all all the pieces that Alex have written. They've all they've all had their own flavour. Mm. And well, Ben specifically asked. Uh, no microtones, yes. no extended techniques. And you could have ignored that. I could have, but but so it takes the language is mm. is different to say the solo piece or the quartet or the quasi concertino. Yeah, the language is quite different. Um, would you say? Yes. Um, well, more I think it's more. Part, um, the quasi concertino. It's it, it's sort of carries. It's a continuation of that a little bit because of the the strings. Mm. Um, but no, definitely it's... Compared to loose knots, it's quite... Yes. Lyrical. And it's not a virtuoso piece in terms of te- technique. It's got some, some quite some runs there, but it's more... It's definitely... A, it's, an, it's an operatic 
lyrical. Yeah. And it's a big it's a song, a singer, yeah. song for um, the, lots of stressful things in the very high register. Mm. But, but you, you take that in your stride. Oh, mo- most of the time. Yeah. But um, no, in terms of it's not it's not um, virtuoso in terms of of finger skill. Apart from the, the cadenzas, which... Oh, yeah, I forgot about... Because <laughs> we didn't play them yesterday. Yeah, yeah we skipped, skipped over To look at those yeah. tonight. The last... Um, they, I said, um, actually, to Hamish, yes, I said, this is where I have my big freak out. Yeah. <laughs> the third movement. Mm-hmm. But yes, they are... Um, but again, they're written in a way that they just lie well. It's, ama- it's amazing, mm-hmm. to, you know, that you write this without actually playing the bassoon. Mm. Because there's nothing that's that with those cadenzas they that they're, they're perfect except for the high E's. The E um, is man is is manageable. Yeah. yeah. But the cadenzas just lie so well that you don't really feel that you're playing something that is difficult. Well, cool. And then you listen to it and think, oh my god, did I actually play that? Mm. <laughs> it sounds harder than it is. That, that that's a good compliment. Yeah. Yes. Oh, maybe. But the maybe. E's, the high E's, sound easier than they are. <laughs> But yeah, no, you're writing, you really, un- Alex understands the bassoon very well. and um, I'd love to play the bassoon. I mean, I play the saxophone, so I suppose having some woodwind understanding of how woodwinds kind of yes. operate, articulate. Helps. Yeah, no, you've definitely, you've got, you've got it. Um, you, the instrument in a really good concept of how the instrument worked. But even from the beginning, I mean, I guess we became friends at that first time I met you at Nelson mm. because you were interested in the bassoon yeah. and you came and spoke about you know we there was or you know you it was obvious that that you liked it yeah I love the sound of it and it's become my favorite instrument oh thank you yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah there's something so kind of bizarre and and earthy about mm. it it's good and the standard of bass- I mean there's so many more bassoon players now and people it's really coming into its own as an instrument Mm. i find Um, people are composers are very interested in the bassoon Um, Mm. well they always were but i mean especially now it's really it's really well Gillian whitehead's bassoon music i think is 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 maybe how i got into the into the bassoon as a as a kind of solo instrument she she Mm. she's got a very um, she, she understands the bassoon mm. very well and, and the character of the bassoon yes yeah. so no I've been very very um, grateful that Gillian and Alex have both written a sub, you know substantial body of work and I recorded all of Gillian's bassoon music well mo- mo- that she'd written to date and the, our goal is to make a CD of Alex's music. So we have the quartet, mm. wind quartet for for wind instruments, the trio, bagatelles, bassoon, clarinet, and piano, mm-hmm. quasi concertino. That's and bassoon and string bassoons, trio. Which I'm playing in September. Loose knots and the concerto. Yeah. That's a whole CD. So five pieces. And it just says a lot. It's, it's you know, really, that CD will take you through. It'll be an emotional listen. You know, <laughs> it takes yeah. you through a lot of aspects of yeah. life. And do you think we'll put the, the Anthony Watson on there? Or not? 
Um, I'd like to. I mean, it would be strange having one piece by another composer, but I think it it would be a nice it way to yeah. to get it get it out there. And I just think, yeah, at the end, mm. I can see. I think the it would be perfect. Piece. Yeah, yeah. A little like a tea. They're fabulous. They are just so good. Mm. <laughs> your favorite New Zealand pieces I think they? that look I don't want to say that they're, it's anything is my my favorite but they're definitely at the at the top yeah and five minutes long but five five minutes of I think you described the most the concentrated five minutes ever, you know but the second movement I think you described as a, a kind of um, hazy night out in Cuba oh, Street <laughs> yeah. yes yeah definitely got that speaking from experience that sort of claustrophobic quality yeah no it's definitely i see cuba street in um psychedelic colors yes yeah um and it's lovely that it really hasn't hasn't changed when i was i was a a night i stayed on cuba street with my mother i was about nine or ten and it really is the same still Mm. the same Mm. so it's kept its character yeah no it's good and it's great to have a Hamish who's a bassoonist who understands how, you know, how it works. With the, you know, the Hamish said it was the first time he's ever conducted a bassoon concerto. Yeah, which just seems interesting. Yeah. He's performed bassoon concertos. Yes, yeah, lots yeah. of and yeah. yeah. So that was quite that was nice. I'm going to be the first, first. Hopefully not the last. Yeah. Has the NDSO ever had a bassoon They had a bassoon, um, Martin Lodge wrote a bassoon concerto and then concerto. Mike yeah. Nock wrote a bassoon concerto for Colin Hemmings and a bassoon and strings. Okay. The Martin Lodge piece is quite a big, bigger orchestra, but I think yours is definitely the longest. Okay. So... Not that that matters. So I can think of four, three bassoon concertos. Mm by New Zealand composers yeah. at the moment. There's a conch concerto. Yeah, Ma- uh, yeah Michael, Harry, Harry, yeah. yeah. Mm. But Hamish played that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think the contra concerto came first. Yeah. Well, there's heavy traffic and then there's, what's um, Martin's pieces? Winter, winter light. Winter light, yeah. Heavy traffic predates that. Mm. It's a cool piece. That was a bit before. You should before. do heavy traffic. Oh, I can't play the contra. Really? Oh. But if for any composers, the contra is. I said bassoon was the the sort of the inst- the new the instrument. But con- contra has yeah. got so many possibilities, and there are people playing the contra as a solo instrument. They just people love it. I mean, I just feel that I I have um, too much to do with um, bassoon, and I play. Dulcy and, and I'm trying to get pieces for that. That's quite an Enough. interesting area. And contra, I, 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 you know, I've heard people playing the contra, and even Hamish, you know, when he was mm. playing, and I said, well, I can't sound that good, so I'll leave it to the mm. experts. But it really can, it can be amazing. Yeah, and it gets it got doesn't appeal to me though as a solo instrument like the bassoon does. It's a totally different sound it's yeah. like it's a lawnmower um yeah oh I'll speak. <laughs> there's another in there's the contraforte which is a new instrument invented in germany which new, is new. Rep- it's the contraforte is about 10 10 years old oh, well, no maybe it's slightly older okay. it replaces the it can be used instead of contra in orchestra mm. um and it's not really like the contra it's got a it's got the same fingering but it's got a completely different bore if you look it's got massive keys like the baritone saxophone what they've done is they've evened out the bore and made it a much more homogenous instrument throughout yeah. the register it's louder yeah. and it's but it's got it's more even and it's beautiful for things like Brahms symphonies when you've got the bass, you know, you're supporting the, when, in this really round, you need the rich bass, round, yeah. big sound. But I think what they've done, they've taken away the character 
of the con- and in French music and and something like Ra- Rite of Spring. Mm-hmm. There's a bit in Rite of Spring where you have two two contras with the don don don, and you can honestly you can hear the bells over the full orchestra. Mm-hmm. You can read, and Stravinsky knew what he was doing. Mm-hmm. You can hear the contra, but in with the contraforte you can't actually. It's lost. It's more like a saxophone. It's more homogenous sound. Or yeah, it's not, and um, but it's becoming its own instrument. So composers are writing for the contraforte mm. now. So that's another another thing. But in the orchestra, it's very controversial. People either love it or they don't like it. So the two instruments are kind of coexisting. It's very in- interesting times mm. because they contrapolitics. We have both now. Yeah. So you tend to use. I've never written for either. I don't Apart know if the NZSO ha- has one. I think they have Contra. But anyway, well, it's good that you're writing for Bassoon anyway. It does, yeah.